All right, if you're not sure about how color spaces work in programs like Photoshop, I'm talking about CMYK and RGB and indexed color and so on, then sit tight, you are definitely in the right spot. How's it going? It's great to see you. Thanks for stopping by. You know, one of the tougher aspects of graphics is understanding color spaces and exactly how they work and when you should use one versus another. What we'll do here in this video is break down the four primary color spaces, RGB, CMYK, indexed color, and grayscale. They're easy to understand. You just need to know a few key concepts for each. So what we'll do here, of course, is we'll break them all down and compare them to one another. So by the end of all this, you'll have a full understanding of each of these color spaces and when you should use one versus another. But before we jump into all of this, I should let you know about a free course that I've put together over at 10 tononlinecom forward slash free. It's all about building websites. It's all about building online businesses and all that fun stuff. So if you're up for it, pause this video and head on over there and sign up. As I say, it is absolutely free. All right, now back to the task at hand here. We're going to jump into these four color spaces. Let's start things off with a look at RGB. Have you heard of the RGB color space before? It stands for red, green, and blue. By the way, as we go along through all this, you might want to jot some notes, scribble some notes here, because I want to give you as much info about these four color spaces as I can. So RGB stands for red, green, and blue. This is called an additive color space. So red, green, and blue are going to be added together to create millions and millions of colors. Give this a try. If you have Photoshop, if you have Photoshop installed, if you have it handy, go ahead and launch it and then open up his color panel from the window menu. And then from the color panel menu, choose RGB sliders. And what you'll get inside the color panel is the three sliders, one for each, one for red, one for green, one for blue. And how this works here, and this is the best way to understand this color space is visually by actually seeing it. How it works here is each slider is going to go from 0 to 255 for a total of 256 steps in each color for each color slider. So if the sliders are all set to 0, what you're going to get is pure black. And here's exactly how this was described to me years and years ago when I was first learning Photoshop and first trying to wrap my head around color spaces. Imagine three spotlights, one for each of these colors, a red spotlight, a green spotlight, and a blue spotlight. If you turn all the spotlights off, what you're going to get is nothing. You're going to get pure darkness, pure black. But if we turn the red spotlight on and we crank his intensity all the way up to a maximum of 255, what we're going to get is of course pure red. If we then turn on the blue spotlight and crank his intensity all the way up to his maximum of 255, now we get a mixture of red and blue. We get magenta, right? And then if we crank up the green slider or the green spotlight all the way up, if we crank him up to his maximum intensity of 255, we're going to get pure white. That's how the RGB color space works. So RGB, I should mention here too, is used in web design, it's used in broadcasting, it's used in any kind of on-screen display or on-screen graphics. This is because computer monitors and displays, smartphone displays, tablet displays, and so on, all use RGB to display color. So that's RGB. It creates color using light. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's a little bit more clear for you anyway. All right, so that's RGB. Let's now take a look at his cousin, his partner in crime, CMYK. Okay, CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and the K stands for black. And how I think of the CMYK color space, I gave you the analogy or the metaphor of the three spotlights for RGB, right? 
With CMYK, I think of a, you know, like a traditional painter mixing pigments on his palette. That's how I think of CMYK. So CMYK is a subtractive color space. You know, if you're following along in Photoshop inside the color panel, switch the color panel to CMYK sliders, if you would. And now what you'll get is four sliders, one for each cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And how it works now in the CMYK color space is each of these sliders ranges from 0% to 100%. If we move the cyan slider all the way to the right to a maximum of 100%, we, of course, are going to get pure 100% cyan. If we drag the yellow slider all the way to the right to a maximum of 100%, we're going to get a mixture of 100% cyan and 100% yellow. And if you remember from kindergarten and grade one, yellow and blue make green, right? This is why I immediately think of a traditional artist or mixing paint pigments together, right? That's the, again, the metaphor that works for me. Now, let's continue here. CMYK, I should say, the, the color space is used in traditional print design and traditional offset printing. CMYK is not used in web design. Now, what's interesting here is I come from a traditional art background and a traditional print design background. So my brain thinks in CMYK even when I'm building websites and setting up images to use online. So what I wind up doing myself anyway, and this is a personal preference, is I work on RGB images, but I use CMYK sliders. So the image is inside the RGB color space but I'm interacting with it within a CMYK interface, if that makes sense. So the interface is using CMYK, but the image is in the RGB color space. It just makes sense for me. Maybe it makes sense for you, probably not, but anyway. <laughs> so that's the deal with CMYK. That's how it works. Now, we've got two more color spaces left. They're kind of short and sweet because they're a little bit more specialized. Let's go and take a look at them. The first one is indexed color. Okay, indexed color. Have you heard of the indexed color space before? Indexed color is a, a palette of 256 colors. So images that are in the indexed color space can only have a maximum of 256 colors. While that may seem like a lot, it is actually not that many at all. Now, how this works in the indexed color space is that colors are stored and indexed in what's called a color lookup table, hence the name indexed. If you want to navigate over to Wikipedia, I'll leave this link for you, by the way, down in the show notes if you want to go and check this out. But I wanted to show you this page and specifically the table over on the right hand side. That's a color lookup table. It's like a legend on a map or, you know, it almost looks like a paint by numbers kind of thing, doesn't it? But anyway, that's indexed color. The two graphic file formats that I want to mention here, they're used in web design and they used indexed color space. They are GIF and PNG. So GIF files and PNG files are both making use of the indexed color space. If you'd like to know more about GIF and PNG and some other graphic file formats that we can use on the web, check the show notes down below. I will be publishing lots of content on those subjects. So I'll add some links for you down below as those lessons get published. That's what I'm trying to get to. Anyway, we've got one more color space to go. I might be losing it here. Who knows? It is grayscale. Let's go and check it out. Okay, last but not least, we've got the grayscale color space. Grayscale is simply made up of shades of gray. So solid black and solid white and shades of gray. So in Photoshop, back in the color palette, you can set it to a grayscale slider. So now you just get a single slider that ranges from zero or pure white all the way to 100% or pure black. So every pixel in a grayscale image has a brightness value ranging from pure white to pure black. That's how it works. Now, it's great to have grayscale as a color space, I suppose, but truth be told, I rarely use it. Instead, what I do if I want to have a black and white or a grayscale image is I use some non-destructive techniques and methods in Photoshop to create a grayscale effect on a full color image. So I can always dial back to the original full color image if I want to. Anyway, so that 
is a conversation for another day, though. It gets a little bit more involved. That really wraps up our look at the four most common color spaces in graphics. All right, there we go. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you now know and understand a little bit more about color spaces. That's what we were talking about and graphics in color spaces. I told you I was losing it a little bit. Anyway, now you know a little bit about RGB and CMYK and index color and the grayscale color space and when you may want to use each. The two important ones, I think, and maybe you'll agree here, are RGB and CMYK. It's important to understand the difference between those two. One's used in web design, one's used in print design, one's used for anything that's displayed on a screen, one's used in anything that's printed on a page. That's basically the gist. So I hope, again, like I say, you had some fun. I hope you enjoyed. Now, there are other color spaces, by the way, that we could delve into. They're a little bit more specialized. There's one called Lab. There's another called Duotone. There's a few others, but we've nailed the important ones anyway. And you know, listen, if you know anyone who's struggling with this stuff, who you think maybe we could lend a hand to, send them a link to this video. Maybe they could get something out of it. And like I say, maybe we can help them out a little bit. All right, now listen, whatever project you're working on, whatever business idea you have, whatever you got cooking on your side, the rest of the world needs it. We want to see what you got. So let's go and build it together. All right, I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.